everyone. Welcome to my channel today. I'm Tara with Pieces of Tara Artistry. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I appreciate so much you being here. Uh, welcome to anybody new who is new to my channel. Uh, I am really excited to be a part of the Fluid Art Experience this summer in Dallas, Texas, July 21st through 23rd. Uh, it's a three-day event. It is going to be at the Renaissance Hotel Richardson in Dallas. Uh, so what's cool about the venue this year is that everything is in the same place. So the hotel, the classes, uh, the cocktail uh, meet and greet on Thursday night, uh, the gala dinner on Friday, all of that will be in the same venue. So you don't have to travel anywhere. The only thing that's separate is the wrap party and that will be at a nearby venue. So um, I'm very excited about that. I'm excited about the classes. So they're gonna be three hour classes uh, that will be presented by each of the instructors. So I will be doing a three hour class in the morning and in the afternoon, all three days. I will be focusing on uh, my, first, um, my first love, the Dutch pour, which is uh, what I originally started doing and I had a lot of fails. So if you failed at the Dutch pour, I've probably done the same thing. So I will be teaching you consistencies and um, techniques, pouring mediums, paint densities. So all that's gonna be included. It's a super comprehensive Dutch pour class. Uh, so if you're, um, even if you're not a beginner, even if you have, you know, done Dutch pours and you may be struggling a bit, uh, or maybe you wanna try using a different pouring medium, we'll talk about that as well. So, and then uh, the afternoon class on uh, both Thursday and Friday will be the Dutch pour with a pearl pour uh, combo. If you watch my channel, you know that I do a lot of those. So uh, basically it's taking the pearls and making them the background for the Dutch pour. So that is also something that I'm very excited to teach. Uh, so again, we're gonna be going through pearl, pearl, pearl pour recipes, Dutch pour recipes, uh, consistencies, all that. So, and then on Saturday, uh, I will be teaching uh, one of the, my new favorite techniques to do. It is the deconstructed bloom. So I will be doing, we'll be starting out using some um, of these four by four or four by 10 tiles, sorry. Uh, and we'll be using our mouth to blow out the blooms and we'll stretch. Uh, so that will be more of a beginner class. And then uh, in the afternoon, we will be moving on to a larger substrate. So it'll be a 10 by 20 canvas and um, we will be using the hair dryer for this technique. So we'll learn how to use the hair dryer to blow out these blooms and then deconstruct them by tilting. So that is the classes that I'm gonna be offering. Um, also gonna be some free events that happen during uh, the day. So uh, Jerry's Artorama is going to be sponsoring a how to wrap your canvas on your own. Uh, which I'm really excited about. I will be attending that. And um, also a art performance by Cole's Color. So really exciting stuff that's gonna be happening. Um, and those are free events that are being held during the day. And also one other thing is that there is going to be a um, art gallery on site for you to be able to purchase art from all of us artists that are a part of this. So, um, yeah, I hope you can can join us. Um, and Garrick Brown is up after me on this premiere. So if you're watching on May 1st, head over to his channel after me and he will be showing you the blooms and the swipes and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, if you haven't watched already, Massey Art Studios, Kathleen Osmore from Cause Creation, Sarah Taylor, Modern Art, and then Marcy is going to um, from Mixed Media Girl is going to also 
be doing a premiere after Garrick. So uh, go check out their channels, uh, check out their classes. It's going to be a fun experience. I'm super excited to be a part of this with them. They're all wonderful artists and people, so it's going to be great. Um, and I hope you guys can join us. If you have any questions about the venue, uh, the classes, any of that, please comment below or send me an email. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, and as far as this channel goes, if you like what you're seeing, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're notified to put every time I put out a new video. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, now I'm going to be showing you some different techniques, the Dutch pour on this one and the pearl pour with the blowout and another, another guy here. So uh, you'll get to see all three of these being made and, and yeah. That's it guys, let's get painting. All right, let's get right into this. So I'm gonna do the Dutch pour first. I mixed up a couple of custom colors there. Um, I This is my recipe for Dutch pour puddle paints. Um, so whether I'm doing the pearl uh, pour with the Dutch pour over top um, or just a regular Dutch pour, that is my pouring mediums. That's how I mix my paints. Um, this one I decided to do kind of a split base, um, three ways. Uh, I'm using a 20 by 20 canvas and I just thought that aesthetically that might be a little bit better than using even, um, a split base of two or even just one, one base color. So I actually really love these color. I, I mixed this sage green and I used uh, my just artist loft white, uh, the titanium white and, uh, put in, um, some yellow, uh, golden benza something. I don't know how to say the word yellow benzamidazzling, something like that. Yellow and, um, some black and mix that together. Just a tad bit of uh, phthalo blue and came up with a sage green. It's just gorgeous, I love it. Uh, I decided to kind of go minimal colors here, uh, a little more muted, and I really love this color combination. Um, that paint's gray, it's just kind of that pop and that depth that you needed. That slate or that light blue gray as the base is really pretty. Um, now you're gonna start seeing me tweaking this, so there's kind of a lot of like negative space over on that area and I just wasn't really super fond of it so I decided to kind of start fiddling with it and um, if you guys know me at all you know that I can never just blow out and be done <laughs> uh, I have to fiddle with it some um, I guess that's just the I don't know I think it must be just part of like a control freak or perfectionist in me that just has to have it just so um, so I decide I am going to start blowing out some other areas here and um, it still just seems unbalanced to me. So I'm looking at it from the other direction. So the white is my top uh, and this other section is my bottom and it just seemed, I don't know, I, I wanted to keep the white on top so it just didn't seem balanced to me. So I decided to kind of play around here, just keep adding in color. Now you'll notice I keep adding the base color and those lighter colors kind of in front of the paint sprayer over top because when you blow it, you decide to blow it out. Um, if you don't do that, oh, okay, so that was a major, I accidentally hit high on my blow dryer instead of low, so I totally messed that up but there's nothing that paint can't fix. So anyways, like what I was saying is if you don't add a little bit of like the color that's ahead of um, that darker color, uh, sorry, you're probably hearing road noise here, but if, if you don't do that, you'll end up with like a dark blue kind of streak that kind of comes from nowhere and doesn't really fit in. So You'll see later on, I do have one of those that I'm going to have to drag my finger through. But I try to, um, yeah, make sure that there's that color that's 
more mixed in uh, so that I don't end up with like such severe lines. So I blew that out. Wasn't quite happy with the color there over there. Plus, I think that's when my husband came in and said, that looks blah over there. So I decided that I needed to go in and add in a little bit more. And I know, like, I know this, like, seems like um, I'm doing this really fast, but you guys, I stand back and I look at it, I contemplate what my, where I'm going, what I need to edit out, what needs to change. Um, and so I edit these videos down for you guys and I speed things up because I know you don't want to take all day <laughs> with me in my studio. So yeah, I blew that one out and it just still was like, there still was just something that was bothering me. And so this is where I stick my finger in and kind of had a blob there that came out of nowhere. And there was a lot of like that um, blue gray just with nothing in it at that point. And so I felt like I really did need to like do something to punch that middle section up. So after I blow this out, I'm going to show you how I will try and manipulate the paint a little bit in that middle section to add a little bit to it without use. I, I, I don't really love using a straw. I just feel like I don't have control when I use a straw to kind of blow things out. I mean, I will if I have to, if something's really far away and I can't get to it. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, see, there's where I kind of have a blob line and it's like not connected to anything. So I just take my finger and kind of maneuver it around, kind of try and follow where the flow of the painting is. Um, and even this, I'm not a fan of how I blew that out with my finger or with my mouth. So I get my finger back in there and start playing around with that middle section and you know, when you're working with these Dutch pours, don't be afraid to put your fingers in it. You know, do a little bit of finger painting. Um, it really, it, you really can't hurt much. When you're working with a pearl pour and you're sticking your finger in it, there is issues with that because that pearl um, color from underneath will start pillow or it'll start clouding or p puffing up if you put your finger in it. So I'm not a big fan of putting my finger in when I have a Dutch pour over top of the pearl cell. But when you just have Dutch pour colors, don't be afraid to sink your finger in, kind of maneuver the paint. Um, you'll see here, I, I noticed that there was just not a lot of like of that green color in the middle section. Um, it was just kind of, oh, it was just kind of blah in there not and not enough and uh, the more I was playing with it more I was just kind of like Ugh, I didn't really like it so much um and so it but that's okay it still ended up fine you see I take some of that green paint and I pull it through that section just to kind of give it a little bit more um contrast a little bit more depth in that middle section so it ended up turning out really pretty I really love how this one turned out. So here's the wet results. You see a little bit there a second ago, you saw the middle section with a little bit of that green in there. Um, the blowout in this is not my normal blowout. Um, I kind of changed it up a little bit because of the uh, composition that I was going for and because it was a wider uh, 20 by 20 canvas. So yeah. I hope you like how that one turned out. Now let's move on to the pearl pour with the Dutch pour combo. Um, this is the consistency for the base coat. The recipe for all the base coats is in the description box. So uh, all of the base coats on um, this painting, uh, which I'm showing, these are all base coats. They all have satin enamel in them. I use the Bear 7300 Deep Base as the satin enamel. You can use deco art satin enamel um, or you can use um, 
regular house paint, but you kind of have to be a little bit careful with like just a regular house paint. Um, certain brands don't work. Uh, but the Bear 7300 Deep Base works really good um, for uh, making these colored pearls. And then you can add the white to it as well, so it's pretty versatile. So that pour over paint that I use is the same recipe as my Dutch pour uh, paints. So this one was mixed with Interference Gold uh, by Golden and uh, Amsterdam Titanium White. Um, so I am just gonna, I tilt it, I tilt it all around um, in a circle and then I do kind of an extreme tilt. So I make sure all the sides are covered because I like my sides to look nice. Um, and then I kind of do like almost like a 90 degree angle tilt to get a large portion of the paint off of the canvas. So you'll see me here. I just continue to tilt until I get and then once I tilt one way, I definitely go back the other way um, and make sure that I'm getting pearls all the way around. Because if you don't bring the paint back to center, then you'll only get pearls on the one side that's really stretched out. Sorry, because <laughs> that's my gloved hand. <laughs> um, but you can see how extreme that tilt is. It's, it's definitely a 90 degree tilt. Um, and so then I'm going to let you guys watch while these pearls they're gonna set up. I kind of fast forward through here so that you see how the pearls set up. Um, but it does really start pearling nicely. Uh, and I kind of see like a pattern through that center that I wanna follow where there's not a lot of pearls. Uh, you can see it's kind of a wider section. So here I'm gonna just take just the straight interference gold on this and put it down below because it's a light paint and it will pop to the top. And what's really pretty about this paint is that it may go on light, but depending on what colors it's mixing with, it will either dry dark or light. So it really is so pretty to work with. It's fun to work with because it's kind of like, it's magic. It turns into a different color when it dries. So you'll see that in the dried results as well. Um, but I'm using all of the same colors. These are the same colors I used in my first Dutch pour uh, in the Dutch pour portion. And um, I really like putting the Amsterdam Titanium White over top in my Dutch pours because it's a heavy paint and it is known for lacing and cells. So I like to put it down and then I um, you get usually get a lot of really pretty lacing. Now with these type of pores, uh, you can't, it's not one that you can just kind of redo very easily. I mean, you kind of have to start over with the Dutch pour if you want to redo it, which in the next painting, you are going to see me do that because I really wasn't happy with the blowout. It wasn't my favorite. Um, it's probably when I'm putting it last in here. Um, but it actually turned out really good, and I'll tell you in a minute why that happened. But you can see in this one, all those really pretty cells are popping to the top. Um, those pearls are forming very nicely, um, and I really like how this one turned out. So here's the dry results, um, and you can see uh, as I go up, you can see that gold. That, that's the interference gold mixing with that Payne's Gray. Um, and so I didn't add in any like bright gold or darker gold, uh, but that is just how it dried when um, it mixed with that Payne's Gray. So it, it actually kind of adds a little bit pop of, of gold. It's really pretty when it's mixed with a light color. Um, it, it makes this really ethereal um, gold. So here we go, number three. Now this is all exactly the same mixes um, this is a 20 by 20 canvas, and I just really, I was pretty frustrated with this one when I did it, and so I was debating whether or not to even add it in this video, but I do want to show you that not all is lost, even when you think it is. So I put the base coat down here for this um, pearl pour. All of those colors have 
uh, satin enamel. My pour over color that I just added is the same as the last video, but it has no satin enamel. That is super important, guys. The pour over colors, no satin enamel in them. Only your base color has the satin enamel. You won't get pearls if you do satin enamel in your pour over colors. So here we go. The pearls are setting up and I normally, they, they were happening, setting up pretty fast. And so I decided to do my blowout. And um, as of lately, I've started waiting like almost a half hour, even 45 minutes before I do my Dutch pour portion. These dry pretty fast. And um, because your base layer with those pearls is pretty thin, um, I find that my Dutch pours hold their shape better if I wait a little while. So I was happy with this blowout. I thought it looked pretty. Um, and it was it was setting up nice. But then um, as it started to dry, I set it aside. And as it started to dry, uh, the base coat started eating the Dutch pour portion. And you can see up in the upper left hand, I just did not like how this was setting up. So I decided that I would go over it and you kind of have to put a good amount of paint down to make sure that you spread to the edges of the current Dutch pour. It's not like you can just scrape it easily because you don't want to disturb the pearls underneath. So I decided I would just kind of blow, take this and just blow it out. Um, and you know, I wasn't, I was really honestly wasn't super happy with this blowout either um but it was better it was better and then i ended up going in later and adding in um some of that darker panes gray to like the fanned out the fan section so like um so you'll see you can see in that that dry result there it's kind of you can kind of see where I added. I didn't really get a good, so that right there in the left corner, I added in some Payne's Gray, um, just directing your attention back to the center so it's not kind of blobby. I don't know if that makes sense, but directing your attention towards the center um, as the focal point of this, and it really gave, ended up giving um, a lot of movement. I love how those um, colors mix and make the different colored pearls. And I'm sorry that in the dry results here, I didn't get a very good, um, so there on the left side, again, you see where I added in that paints gray, kind of directing yourself, your eyes to the center, and it ended up being really, really pretty in the end. So there they are, guys, all three of them. Um, make sure to head over to Garrick Brown after me, um, and thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. Make sure to head over to fluidartexperience.com to get tickets for our upcoming event. All right, guys, have a great, great day. Bye, y'all.